Hello. Yes, you did read that correctly. I am taking Alzheimer's medication, but it's not for what you think. So, Dad, I would advise you to not watch this video because we are talking about sex today. I see the progression that my channel has gone through to get here, but I never thought it would come to this, to be honest. I have no shame in actually, you know, talking about it. I think it is an important topic, so let's get into it. Oh, and by the way, I'm chilling in the car because I bought a bike for Nolan, and the girl has not told me which apartment building she is in. Uh, I bought it off Facebook Marketplace, so we're just gonna chill here and do this video while I wait for her to message me back. I am taking Alzheimer's medication at 26, and this is a medication that, like Viagra, which was originally used, I think, for heart problems, but then they later learned, hey, this is actually great for, you know, erectile dysfunction. This is a drug like that. It is called Mamantine. Originally, it's used for Alzheimer's, but they learned that off-label, it can be used for OCD and anxiety, which I guess I have. I don't really like ever saying that, but I guess if you have to be medicated for it, which I have for the past like six years, then it's pretty bad. But anyway, so off-label it has shown to be useful for anxiety and OCD, as well as improve people's sex drive. How this all came about was obviously I got my surgery. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look at some of my videos. I had a this vestibulectomy, I think that's how you say it, because I had vestibulodynia where I had mast cells in my vestibule. There's a guy just chilling out there. He can learn about my vestibule too. That's all good to go. I'm not having pain anymore, but the issue is I have zero sex drive. And beforehand it was like, okay, do I just not want to do it because I'm in pain? Which is a factor obviously for lots of people. I had a girl message me on Instagram and she was like, it's just so weird that I don't want to have sex, but I also have this massive pain. And I was like, girl, it's not weird. Like, of course, why would you want to do something that's painful? Like, and she's like, is it normal? And I was like, yeah, it's totally normal. Now that we've conquered that, it is time to conquer the sex drive because I would like to feel things and have it be pleasurable. So I went and saw my doctor and let me just say, she was stoked to talk to me about this topic. So my doctor is in Utah County, which is a pretty conservative area. Lots of young people like me that she probably sees that are facing these same issues, but maybe aren't as open to talk about it because of being more conservative. But I was like, give me all the knowledge. And she was like, girl, I have done so much research and she was throwing everything at me. So I'm gonna throw it at you. First thing she said to me is, let's take you off the venlafaxine. And I have been on 150 milligrams for two years, I think. And so she was like, let's take you off of that. And I was like, and? put me on what and she was like let's just take you off of it and I was like I that terrifies me before I was on venlafaxine I was on Zoloft and I think I went on that when I was like 21 and it changed my life it changed my life I think that you know if people don't want to be on medication there's probably natural resources routes that you can go but it was amazing I felt like my true self my head was not as loud and I could actually sleep because I wasn't thinking of all these anxious thoughts. I literally would worry about everything under the sun, about my future children that I don't have and I didn't even, wasn't even remotely close to being married or dating anyone, nothing. It was just these outlandish things that I would be worried about. Anyway, I was like, yeah, I don't necessarily feel comfortable just going off of that although I do feel like maybe my therapist before mentioned that the anxiety medication can just give your brain a break if you've had like trauma I guess which I, I wouldn't necessarily say I've had trauma in any case but some people just need their brain needs a break and so the anxiety medication can just give your brain a break and help your brain heal. And then you can go off of it and be fine. Also, my life is very different. Beforehand, when I was freaking the freak out, I was destroying my relationships 
but now I am in a steady relationship. I am married. I have a stable job. You know, I'm just in a different phase of life that doesn't cause so much anxiety. All of that being said, now I'm on a man team. So I will put some clips in of me decreasing the venlafaxine and increasing the memantine. So here is that. Tonight is day one of me decreasing my venlafaxine. I'm going from 150 milligrams to 75, and then I'm doing five milligrams of the memantine. And I think I'm just doing that for three days at bedtime, and then I'm doing it for three days morning and night, and then I'm increasing it or something like that. I'm curious to see how I will feel because I feel like 150 down to 75 is kind of a lot, and tomorrow I am training someone at work, so let's hope that I can still make sentences. I can't really do that right now, so we'll see. Oh no, let me make this look any better. Hold on. I don't know if I want more light on my face to illuminate my zits. It's coming at you with a quick little update. It is day, I think day like 11 or 12. I have been on 20 milligrams of memantine and I decreased to 75 milligrams of vemifaxine from 150. I am almost going down in like a couple days. I'll go down again on the vemifaxine to 37.5 and everything up until now has felt fine. The only thing the first two days I kind of had a headache and then the last couple of days, so day like 11, 12, I have felt really tired and I've gotten enough sleep. Like I go to bed the same time every day. So I don't know what that's about, but we shall see if, you know, the tiredness goes away, but hopefully I don't start panicking when I'm totally off the venlafaxine. I haven't noticed anything with my sex drive yet, but I think it just takes a little bit for the venlafaxine to totally get out of my system. So I have another, I think 14 days, like until I'm totally off the venlafaxine. I'll keep you guys updated. I look like a cone head because I have a bun on my head. Wanted to give you guys a quick little update. I am on like day 12 of coming off of my anxiety medication. I think I did an update yesterday and I looked exactly the same. It looked like this. Something's definitely going on because I feel like dizzy and like out of it. Like I have to like focus really hard on what I'm doing, which I'm trying to work right now. So that's not very helpful. I feel kind of like just out of it and like dizzy and I'm just glad that I work sitting down and I don't have to like talk to customers. I mean, I do, I chat with them, but I don't have to like actually verbally talk to them because I probably wouldn't make sense. Yeah. I thought for a second like, oh, maybe it's just cause like I need to eat more often. Cause sometimes I feel like a little out of it if I haven't eaten for a minute, like because my blood sugar gets low. So today I'm gonna try to eat, like I have some pasta, I'm literally gonna eat pasta all day, which is very filling. And so that should tell me whether it's eating or the medication withdrawals, which I'm pretty sure it's the medication withdrawals. So anyway, I'm gonna stop talking. This is really fun. Hello. So last night was my first night without taking any, any doesn't make sense, without taking any venlafaxine. I went down to 37.5 but now I'm totally off and a weird thing that happened this morning. So I woke up at five o'clock because it's Saturday and I was really excited to start all the projects that I wanted to start today because I'm weird like that. So I woke up just like naturally and I started doing stuff, but then I got tired again. So I was like, oh, I'm going to go back to bed. And I went back to bed for a couple hours and my dreams were all like, they all had to do with anxiety or like claustrophobia. Like I was in this apartment that was really messy, which makes me feel anxious. And it was like the doors were really tiny. You had to crawl through them and everything was like slanted ceilings, which I love slanted ceilings, but not where I can't stand up fully. And so it was like really claustrophobic. And I was like, I don't like this place. I don't know, I was just having dreams about like, I knew that I was laying on my arms because I was physically laying on my arms while I was sleeping and I wanted to move them, but I couldn't. So yeah, things like that. I don't know if that has to do with the withdrawals, but I can totally see it because when I've had withdrawals before, it makes me have weird dreams. In the past 
couple months, however long I have been going on this decrease of the methaxine, I've only had, what is up with the sirens? I don't know. Anyway, I've only had like one meltdown, one freak out session. So that's pretty normal, I think. That's pretty normal for like a normal person, not for an anxious person, right? And I talked to Nolan about it, I cried a little bit, and then we were good to go. So I'm hopeful that this is actually going to work. And I'm also hopeful because even when I was on the 37, I started feeling things going on down there a little more than usual. Like I explain it like before when I was on a full 150 milligrams, when I was being touched in any way down there, it just felt like someone was like touching my arm. Like not like massaging my arm or like tickling my arm in a nice way, just like touching it. It was like, okay, you can stop touching it. Like, I don't know, it's like either way. It didn't feel good though. It was just like, okay. So it was really hard you know, to be interested in doing anything because it was just like, well, this feels like nothing. You're just touching me. I've had a little bit of a breakthrough where it's like, oh, this feels nice. Keep going. I kind of like it. Not like mind blowing or anything, but my only reference really is like the movies where like girls, like they start making out or whatnot. And they're like, oh my gosh, this is the greatest thing ever. And like, it's like this total reaction, which might be it for some people, but also might be dramatized due to Hollywood. So I don't know. I just wish more people would like talk openly about how it actually feels when you're being touched in your area because it would help me have a gauge on things. Weird world we live in. I think it's weird that we don't talk about these things. I know that my parents might have a different opinion and my dad intentionally doesn't watch any videos where I talk about sex because, you know, I'm his little girl. I just think it's strange that we don't talk about these things. I'm gonna go shower now. I am now fully off the Venlafaxine. As you saw, I kind of had a weird dream this morning, but so far i've only had one meltdown yay me awesome and i'm hoping that once all the venom vaccine gets out of my body then i will fully be able to embrace my sexuality and figure that stuff out but my doctor also gave me a long list of other things that i could try she was very excited to share all of these things with me so i'm gonna share them with you I did some blood work and she told me that I was low on zinc, so I am now taking a zinc supplement twice a day. She said that that can be a factor as well. I'm also taking omega-3. I'm taking lots of other vitamins and stuff. I was anti-vitamin for a while because my mom shoved them down her throats growing up and I was like, no, I'm not doing that anymore. But now that I'm an adult and I feel like I understand the benefits. Now I'm back on the vitamin grind, so I have a little pill thing for the week, and I take them every morning. Another thing she suggested is to try doing Kegels during sex, which I have tried once. It's kind of weird because I feel like I don't have control. Well, I know I don't have control of my muscles down there. The physical therapist told me that I don't have control of them, and I need to figure that out because I feel like that will make a difference with having kids in the future if I can actually, you know, get them out of me. That's another thing that any woman can try, and I think it feels good for the man too. We'll keep trying that. She said that we can just try having sex for 30 days straight because the more you practice, the better you'll get. The more you'll learn what you like and what you don't like by repetitively doing it over and over, you'll just get more used to being turned on, wanting to be turned on. 30 days is a bit much for me. Um, doing it every single day, we don't really have the energy or time for that, but you know, more frequently we can do that. Another thing she mentioned is to have my husband eat pineapple because it can actually help their pheromones smell sweeter. And if you like the pheromones of your partner, then you're going to want to be around them more and you're going to be more attracted to them. There are other foods that are aphrodisiacs. That means that they supposedly turn you on. One of them being black licorice. It's not super concrete whether that actually helps but it's supposed to help for women so i bought myself some black licorice i've been taking it taking it i've been eating it every morning with my vitamins because i don't like black licorice and i kind of have been treating it as a vitamin it's kind of the worst actually but i'll try anything you can also look up an entire list of foods that are supposed aphrodisiacs if you want to just partake in those there is also some music you can listen to. She shared with me an album called Liquid Minds. 
and it is supposed to be for anxiety and it's supposed to decrease your anxiety it's kind of spa type music but she was like you can always listen to that just on the daily or while you're having sex i guess if you're feeling anxious or anything which i am not there's a thing though i think there's also one called brain waves if you want to look that up another thing we've tried that i do like is sensory deprivation being blindfolded or listening to music i don't know it just kind of helps my brain calm down and just be in the moment and not think about what i look like to my partner not think about the things that i need to do it kind of puts me in like a dreamlike state i guess i don't know have you guys ever like been in those weird mazes or there's like strobing lights and you know it kind of makes you feel like you're in a dream that's how sensory deprivation feels to me but I like it. She also mentioned that you can do things that are quote-unquote sexual but don't lead to sex like a massage or you can start the night with just giving each other massages and that might help your sex drive or turn you on a little bit plus massages are great so I'd never say no to that. Another thing is to switch locations that you're having sex because it can kind of make you feel excited. My husband also saw an article the other day that said release a, a bee or a wasp inside your room to add an element of danger and I was like heck no nope I don't want to do that I'll just switch locations that's enough change for me I don't need to be in my room and the last one she said was sleep naked which I already sleep with just underwear on usually but she told me about this tribe in Africa where it's an arranged marriage type deal so once they know the people that are gonna get married they have them sleep in the same bed not custom to western culture that would not fly but they have them sleep next to each other from the time they're really little and then by the time they get married they're just so comfortable with each other's bodies and i guess they understand each other's bodies a bit more that i guess their sex life is just you know stellar it's great so she mentioned that i could try that anyway those are all of the suggestions that my doctor gave me I'm just excited to see what exactly the Mamantine will do and being off the Bimifaxine because I know that Bimifaxine is one of the worst depression anxiety medications that just totally annihilates your sex drive. I'm excited to have that out of my system. I hope this video is helpful to someone out there or interesting. The more you know, the better. And you never know who in the future might need this information and you can share it with them. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because why not? I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Mm -hmm.